In this video, we're going to discuss the PoE power requirements for uh, the most common types of ruckus access points. So let's have a look at that. Uh, so first we have the indoor R series. So we're looking at the R320, the R510, and the R610. Um, so we see that the 320, um, you see at the top here, we're talking about 802.3 AF, so 15.4 watts, uh, 30 watts for AT, or um, up to 60 or 90 watts for BT, uh, POH, or UPOE. So, um, <clears throat> so uh, we see that, that both the R320 uh, maxes out at 12 watts, um, the R510, 12 watts, and then the R610, uh, this is in yellow because it's not full functionality. So at 15 watts, uh, the 2.4 radio is uh, 2 by 3 um, so two transmit chains and, and three receive chain. Um, the five gigahertz radio is at full three by three. Uh, however, we also disable the second ethernet port and we disable the USB port. So you couldn't use the IOT module, for example. Uh, at 30 watts at full power, so it actually requires 18.8 watts, um, it's got a full 3.3 uh, by 3 chain on 2.4, a 3 by 3 chain on uh, 5 gigahertz, and then we have enabled the second Ethernet port and the USB port. So full functionality at 30 watts, or PoE plus, you may know it as. So moving forward, the 700 series, so R710, 720, 730, um, there is a, a, a few different features and functionality here. So, so none of them are full powered on 15.4 watts, right? So the, uh, the 710, so it's only running at two by four, so two transmit, four receive um, on 2.4, four by four, uh, although slightly less output power. So the, so the output power is slightly reduced uh, on 2.4. Um, the second Ethernet port is, a, is disabled and the USB port is disabled. At 30 watts, you have full functionality. So 4x4 on the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz, and the second Ethernet port is enabled and the USB port is enabled. So if all you have is a PoE Plus switch or AT switch, then that would be the right choice for your situation. The uh, R720, um, again, at, at AF, it will run at AF, uh, or at 15.4 watts. However, it's going to run one by four, um, so your performance will be um, largely degraded uh, at both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Um, the second Ethernet port is disabled, and the USB port is disabled. So you really don't want to run this except maybe in an emergency situation, but this is not how you should be running your network on a regular basis. Um, there's also, uh, at, at 30 watt, at AT, the radios are running full, uh, although slightly uh, slightly less performance, but um, they're running 4x4 at 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. However, uh, it's, it's 18 dB per chain as opposed to 23, and 20 dB as opposed to 22. So slightly less power, uh, but still all the, all the antennas are, uh, all the send and receive antennas are, are active. Um, the second Ethernet port is still disabled, and the USB port is disabled. Uh, if we get to 33.5 watts, so slightly above um, the, the 30 watt maximum for AT, then we get full functionality. So all the radio chains, uh, full output, and, and the second Ethernet port and the USB port. The R730, uh, it's basically useless at, at 15.4 watts, right? If both the radios are disabled. Um, the, uh, both Ethernet ports are enabled, the USB port is disabled, the Zigbee BLE radio is disabled. So it is pretty much enough to get it configured and that's about it. Um, at, uh, at 30 watts of power, you've got uh, four by four on the radio. So the radios are up and running. Uh, both Ethernet ports are enabled, USB is enabled, the BLE radio is disabled. Um, and then at, uh, at um, 31 watts, so, so again, above uh, the 30 watt maximum, then you've got full functionality. So um, both radios, both Ethernet ports, the USB port and the BLE port are all enabled at that point. I should also point out that uh, the, the 710 is one gig Ethernet port. The 720 has a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port and the R730 has a five gigabit ethernet port. So 
uh, not only do you have to worry about your power requirements when you're choosing which 7 series AP to run, uh, but you also you know, want to worry about what your Ethernet capability is. There's really very little point running an R730 uh, on a 1 gig Ethernet port, for example, right? This AP can output nearly 5 gigs of throughput, but if it can't get that out onto the wire, then you know it's it's really less value to you. So um, uh, the the reason that you might buy it is if you are planning to upgrade in the near future. Then you know if you only have one gig or two and a half gig, and you are planning to upgrade to five gig, you know down the road you may um, start with that AP. However, again, you have to worry about the PoE power requirements. So make sure you have enough power to power that device. Outdoor APs, so um, the T310, the 610, the 710. So the 310 runs all functionality on 15.4 watts. So it's it's fine on AF. The 610 uh, runs slightly degraded um, on on uh, 15.4 and full on 30 watts. So two by two instead of four by four on the 2.4 radio. Um, 4x4 four four on the uh, on the 5 gigahertz radio. So the 5 gigahertz radio runs fine. Uh, the 2.4 radio runs basically at half, half the antenna, transmit and receive antennas. Um, uh, the second Ethernet port is disabled and the USB is disabled at 15.4. But all that function is available to you at 30 watt. And again, you know, Ruckus does not and has not made a uh, regular PoE switch in many years. We all of our switches are at least PoE plus or 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 802.3 AT and have been for many many years. So it would be uncommon that you would run into at least as a, in a ruckus switch. It's very unlikely you would run into a uh, AF switch. Almost all are AT or better. Uh, and then lastly, the 710 here. So it runs two by four uh, at 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, 4 by 4 at um, at uh, 5 gigahertz, although the power is degraded in both cases. Um, so even though it's running 4 by 4, it's running 20 dB per chain instead of 28. Um, second Ethernet port is disabled and the USB port is disabled in AF, where obviously it's enabled uh, if you have you know 25 watts if you're running running AT. So full functionality available to you at AT in both of those models. And and remember in a, in the outdoor APs. In, uh, in many cases, they can be powered by AC power directly in as well. So, uh, for example, in the case of the, the T710, you can power the AP with AC directly in, you can run fiber directly in, and then you actually have a PoE out port, which is really nice uh, on, that, on that T710 should you need it to run a camera or something like that. And lastly, the H series here. So this is the uh, H for hospitality. Uh, so it's the small wall plate AP. So um, the H510 and the H320 both run full power on 15.4 watts. So that means two by two at 2.4 and two by two at uh, five gigahertz. Um, and the H320, uh, oh, as the H510 also has the uh, four port switch in the bottom right with PoE out. Um, the H320 full functionality on six watts of power, so it's a one by one at 2.4 and two by two at five gigahertz. Okay, so that's it. Um, so you know the important thing is make sure you have the right switch in place, right? Whether it be a ruckus switch or or another vendor, uh, make sure you have the right switch. And it's also important in most cases to run LLDP on the switch and the access point so that they can correctly negotiate uh, the power requirements. Okay, that's it. Thanks for joining. Have a great day.